Hi, Pete Moore, Gunmark TV. This is my Tika T1X. I bought it at the beginning of this year, and I really like it. One of my biggest issues with the rifle was the low comb. Fine if you're doing just sporting shooting, like a 3 to 9 by 40 scope for busting bunnies and things at normal ranges, but I primarily bought this rifle um, to push the range out 100, 200 yards, maybe more, because I always like the idea of long range rim fire, and um, so I decided to get a rifle that I considered um, capable of doing it. Uh, so I put on the big scope, this is Discovery 4 to 25 by 50, and it does lift the scope a little bit higher over the borderline compared to a hunting type setup. So I was casting around for a, a um, some sort of comb extension kit, and the importers, GMK Limited, sent me a Calyx Technic, they're Swedish, uh, and it's a kit that you can install yourself and it all goes inside the butt, as we shall see, uh, and it does make a difference. If you look, it's fully down. It gives you a slight comb raise and a little bit more cheek support if you need it. But you just slack off this screw and take it right up, as you can see. Much too high for this scope. But if you're fitting night vision, which is usually much higher, and there's always issues with, with um, should we say, stock weld with night vision, and even eye scope alignment, then it does it all. It's a good piece of kit. A couple of caveats that I found, uh, but overall it's a, it's a very simple, very simple job. You just need a few few tools and a few bits and pieces. Here's the Calyx box. The unit is called a CR1. It's for all Tika T3 type rifles. They've got synthetic hollow stocks. So what's inside? First of all, set of instructions which are reasonably thorough uh, followed by a very clever item it's the drilling template which is self-adhesive as we'll see in a bit when we actually do it but this allows you to position it onto the comb of the stock and drill exactly right so you don't get anything lopsided mechanics consist of the actual comb slash cheek piece you see it's ambidextrous has two aluminium pillars inside there. Next we have the mounting block, which is aluminium. Basically, that's how, it's, that's how, how it goes. So what you do, you drill holes in the top of the comb and then you insert this from inside. So that goes up and down like that. You have a locking screw that goes in like that, that locks it solid, it comes up and down. And this is say this is this is not handed, so you could put this in from left or right hand use. So basically, what you do, you would drill a hole the other side of the stock, as we'll see, if you want to, and just reverse where this screw is. Finally, you get you don't get the Allen key. That's you got to provide that yourself. What you get is this screw actually goes from the top of the stock and holds the block in position inside inside the, um, the butt. These little things are spacers, and they're marked one. Then you have a little circlip, which if you want to, fits onto the rear post of, of, of this and stops the, um, the actual comb bit coming off, but I've never found the need to. As well as that, you need a certain amount of tools. Uh, Phillips screwdriver to get your old butt pad off. An Allen key to secure the, the central locking screw that holds this, this block in position. You'll need an electric drill and three drill bits. 6mm, 10mm and 12mm. And at this stage I'd recommend that you also get a 2mm drill which allows you to drill a pilot hole because if you're drilling with a 12mm drill on the top of the comb it's all too easy to drift off and this job is all about getting the holes in the right position. Um, so what I would do, what I did when I fitted mine, was you drill a 2mm pilot hole, then you use the 6mm drill to open the hole up, then the 10mm drill, and then the 12mm drill, so you get a perfect hole. Don't get anything smaller. That's it, so now we'll get to work. First of all, we'll look at the template. I've cut it out, as you can see, there's cutting lines here and here, and this crucifix, that's where, where it is. You've got the F for the front, and the rear for the back. If you look carefully here, you can see where that little V-shaped cutout is. 
I've aligned that with the seam on the top of the butt, the moulding seam, and if you go to the front, where you see the end of the arrow where it says F, again I've aligned that with the seam on top. So it's a very foolproof way of aligning the holes. Um, it's, it's quite clever because otherwise you'd be mucking about trying to get the holes right. Also, if you're a right hander like me, you drill the right hand side of the stock for this fitting screw. If you're a left hander, you drill the left hand side of the stock. It's quite logical because the way the thing. So that's it. So you drill, as I said, pilot holes, pilot holes all the way through, then you drill up until you've got the holes right. Now, this has already been done, save time. So I just peel this off, like so, as you can see. That's my 10 mil hole. That's my six mil hole. And there are my two 12 mil holes already done, yeah? So we're now in a position to get the rest of the equipment into it. See, now we have to partially assemble the uh, block inside. This screw obviously comes off and that will go and last once the block's inside. What you have here is a set of positioners or spacers. And I think you can see it says T3F there. And the other one says T3R, so that's front and rear. So the block, I said, can be is, is, is ambidextrous, so it fits in like this. And the instructions say that T3F front goes in first. You just push it down until it clips in. And T3R goes at the rear. So as you can see, T3F front is taller than T3R rear. Okay, so that's the block assembled um, for now because we've now got to put it in the in the stock and then screw it down. Uh, Calyx recommend using a knife, so I've got my trusty Spyderco Farid here, and they've very conveniently cut a slot in the bottom of it. So literally, you drop that onto the edge of the knife. You could use any knife at all. I'm just showing off with this knife here, and you carefully insert it inside. You can you can see as you go in the holes line up and then you drop this screw down and it engages got like first time is pretty damn good that engages and all you do is wind that down which obviously pulls the block up if you look at the end you look in there you can see that the blocks in there I don't know if you actually can you can just see the blue there the block inside so that is that fitted locate push it down see that's a nice smooth not interference but it's, it's quite firm which is good this is a locking screw this goes in from the right side so that's that so that goes up and down nicely and then if you want to when you get the right height for anything just lock it off and you're solid or you can just push it all the way down so that is it fitted um, little tip here I would say um, something you you can actually drill the holes with the stock on a bipod it's probably a better idea to use a workmate because you can take that out stock and you can clamp it in the workmate properly and it gives you a, a really supported surface also it allows you to drill the holes exactly vertical which is the, which is the trick all you do is put the butt back on and you're back in business and that is the Calyx Technics CR1 adjustable comb and very good it is too you get about you can see probably a good inch of movement there if you need it which is more than enough I'd like to thank uh, the guys from Calyx Technics for sending me the kit and also GMK um, retail price is around £150 like you see in comment tell your friends support the site channel and if you need to know anything else or if you want me to look at anything then it's uh, pmore.shootingsports at gmail.com and good and safe shooting.